This video now is going to focus on removing elements from an ArrayList. What happens when an ArrayList gets too large, or there's certain elements that are in the ArrayList, but we don't need them anymore. We want to delete them from that ArrayList so that our program can run smoothly. So an example of that is, is right behind me. This is where we left our sketch off, that we have this empty ArrayList that we initialized and set up. And now what I added to it is every time through draw, a particle is added. And this looks like, hey, that's the particle system example we wanted to make. We're done. All it is is adding a new particle every time in draw and then saying, hey, all of those update and display them. But here's the issue. This array list is getting larger and larger and larger. We're adding and adding and adding particles to it. We're never deleting them. So we need to figure out how do we delete them. So in order to figure out how to delete them, this is going to cover the last two methods of array list that we, that we care about. So let's take a look at that list, right? We already circled it because that's the, this is the second time through. I screwed it up the first time around. But um, we, are, uh, we are looking at remove and size. So what we want to say right now is, hey, let's just start with this simple uh, way of doing it. If the array list gets too big, delete some elements out of the list. So how do we first say if the array list gets too big? Well, within a regular array, we know we can say that array.length will give us the, si the length of the array. With an array list, we call the method. The method is called size. So that's sort of an easy thing to do. We can actually just say something like if a.size is greater than 100, right? Now do something. If the number of elements in that array list has somehow exceeded 100, this will happen very quickly if we're adding a particle every frame, what do we do? We need to remove an element from that array list. So the remove function deletes elements from that list. What do we have to tell it? We have to tell it which one. Elements in an array list are in an array list are indexed just like in a regular array. So if this is kind of a representation of our array list and we can sort of think of there are like these particles floating in each slot, and each slot has an index. If I ask, if I say to remove one, a dot remove. Now, which one should I remove? I could say let's remove zero or one or two. It doesn't really matter. But in this case, what I'm going to actually do is say remove zero. I want to remove that first element from the array list. Why? Because when you add elements to the array list, they get tacked on to the end. So you can see this. Array list sort of drawing is expanding with slots for particles. It gets bigger and bigger each time we add one. If we take away the first one, that's the oldest particle. So in this case, I'm saying it's gotten very big. Find the oldest particle and delete it. So a dot remove zero. So this is a sort of first little quick example of what of how we might keep an array list from getting too big. So let's go back to our example over here, and we can say, hey, okay. Let's add that bit of code. If particles.size is greater than, let's just do something really simple right now, greater than 15, it's an arbitrary number, particles.remove zero. Let's do that. Now let's take a look at it. You can see they're actually, it's like making them, but it's like deleting them very quickly, like, because we can only have 15 total. And so, you know, something more <laughs> reasonable. <laughs> Hello again, I dropped something. Um, Something more reasonable might be 100. And we can see, OK, it's giving us 100 particles. And we, I can kind of see that they're getting deleted. So maybe we want it to be larger. This is not the point of this. You can tune your program to figure out what the right size and when you want to delete. The point of this is this is a really simple way, basic demonstration of how we can just keep an array list size to a maximum as well and uh, to a maximum and, and remove elements from that list as, uh, when we want to. Now, and this is not. But this is not the implementation we're going to use in our first particle system example that we're building. What we actually want to do is something different. We want to say, hey, when a particle is finished, remove it. So it's not about just saying, oh, we can only have 100. We might say, like, hey, only the particles on the screen let's keep. Only the particles whose alpha hasn't faded away let's keep. So we want to make this a little bit more advanced. We want to figure out when a particle is finished, Let's remove it. So we need to talk about this a little bit, and then we're going to add that code um, to this example. So over here, let's figure out how we're going to do that. OK. So here's the thing. Ah, oh, this is <laughs> this very, very sad thing to tell you. We were so happy about that enhanced loop, right? That enhanced loop that we have over here for every particle p in particles. We don't have to have int i and any of that stuff. The problem with this enhanced loop is we can't modify 
the array list while we're in that loop. And what we want to do right now is modify the array list while we're in that loop. We want to say for every particle in the array list particles, check every one. If one of them is finished, delete it from the array list. So we want to delete things while we're looping through the array list. So we can't use this loop. But hey, we know how to write a loop that counts. We could use a loop that counts. So let's figure that out. We could say, in the case of our array list called A over here, we could say int i equals 0, i is less than, how long is the array list? a dot size, a dot size, i plus plus. Now we could say particle p equals a dot get i. So right, this is what the, the enhanced loop does for us. It just says, hey, do something to all the particles. We can be more long-winded about it. We can actually count from 0 to the end of the array list, and we can ask for each particle at its index i individually. So we're good. We can do this. And then we can say things like, remember we had that function? If particle is dead, remember that function we wrote in the particle class that said when lifespan is less than 0, when lifespan has gone all the way down to 0, we're done with it. We can delete it. Well, now that we have that function, we can then say a dot remove i, right? This is, this is our new algorithm that we have for looping through an array list. So there's going to be a problem with this. We're going to get to the problem with this in a second. But this is whenever you want to manipulate an array list, add, delete, alter the order of things while you're looping through it, you have to loop through it manually. In truth, you might, see, you might see some examples in processing that also use something called an iterator. There's an iterator object in Java. And in fact, if you read the Nature of Code book, it goes through it. But I, I've now decided that I think it's best and simplest to just look at two scenarios. The enhanced loop when we just want to, hey, let's look at all the objects. For every particle p in the ArrayList particles, boom, we're done. If we want to manipulate or do something more kind of fancy to the array list during the loop, we have to count through the indices ourselves and access each particle. This is a case of that when we want to delete particles. So let's actually put this in our code. <laughs> it's going to work. But then I want to talk about what's, there's something a little goofy going on here that's, that's a bit of a problem. That'll be where we'll kind of finish this video. So OK, let's go add this to our code. Here we are. We can say, all right. Instead of using the enhanced loop, we need to replace this enhanced loop with a loop that counts for int i equals 0, i is less than particles dot size i plus plus particle p equals particles dot get i. If I run this, you can see exactly the same instead of the enhanced loop looking at each particle individually. But now down here, I can say, hey, Let's make sure, right? Remember, we have this function is dead. We have this function is dead that says when lifespan is less than zero, give us the value true. Awesome, that's exactly what we need. If p is dead, then particles dot remove i, right? Because if we're looping through the array list, we're on particle i. If particle i is dead, remove particle i. And let's run this. And we won't see anything different. It just works. We, the reason why we don't see anything different is we're removing them kind of surreptitiously in the background when they faded out. We don't see them anymore. You know, as an exercise, if, if you would like an exercise, like right now, pause, do an exercise, go get this example, which is 4.2 or something in the Nature of Code book, um, and change it to instead of when a particle has faded out, when it's off the screen. If its y value is greater than height, or its x value is greater than width, or less than 0, try removing a particle in that case. So, but we, we're, so we're, we're kind of done here, except for a, a rather important detail that in many ways, hey, it works. It doesn't seem to be going too slow. It's fine. Who cares? Why should we go deeper and worry about things that we might not need to worry about? But it's my obligation. I am under contract to show you that there is a kind of subtle flaw that in the end might not really matter, but in, in some of the things that you build could really matter. So I'm obligated to point that out to you right now. Let's go take a look at what it is. Um, OK, so let's create a scenario. We can get rid of all this stuff that we've written up here. Let's make an array list. And I'm going to put, 
hello, I'm going to put letters in this array list. So here is my diagram of an array list, and I'm going to put the letters A, B, C, D, and E in it. And we can consider those particles, particle A, particle B, particle C, particle D. And I'm going to say to you that particle C is the one that's dead right now. So all of the other ones are alive, and particle C is dead. So particle C is the one that we want to remove. And they each have an index, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Can you see those numbers? If not, you can count from 0 to 4, I bet. 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So we're going to, for a moment, like we're going to pretend to be the loop. We are the loop. I, we are I. I am I. Well, oh, that's weird. I, I am I. 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 OK, I is equal to 0. I don't like that over there. I is equal to 0. 0 is A. Is A alive? Yup. Update display. We're done. I is now equal to 1. Is, a al is 1 alive B? Yes, it is. Update display. I is now equal to 2. Is 2 alive? No, it's dead. We need to delete it from the array list. So we're going to say A dot remove 2. Now what happens to that array list when we delete that element? Let's draw that array list again. Here is what the array list looks like now once we've deleted that element. It's A, B, D, E, because we removed C. D and E slide over to fit into the spots next to B. That's what the array list looks like now. Let's look at its index values. 0, 1, 2, 3. Well, what are we on now? We just checked 2. Now we have to check 3. Is 3, whoa, whoa, wait a second here. If you're following along, we're checking E. We never checked D. We checked C. We removed it. D slid over. So we, we're not checking D. We're checking E next. So if you, if, <laughs> what's happening here? When, because of the way the elements slide over as we're looping forward through the array, we could be skipping them by accident. Now in the end, it doesn't really matter. Maybe we didn't check D and we didn't display it. We'll display it next time. Big deal. You might see a little blip on the screen. But this could, you know, in other programs, this could be a disastrous, you know, catast have catastrophic consequences. So you have to be very careful. If you are looping through a list and manipulating that list, I mean, just think about it. What if you were looping through a list and adding things to it while you were looping? You could never get to the end of it. So you'd have this infinite loop that would never get to the end, and your program could potentially crash. There's so many things that can go wrong when you're manipulating a list while you're looping through it. So you just have to be careful and be aware of what's happening with those elements. How are you adding? How are you subtracting? Where are you in the loop? In this case, there's a very simple solution. The simple solution is, if we go backwards through the list, we won't have this problem, right? Because if we start with E, then with D, then with C, you know, we could delete stuff and all these things can shuffle around. B and A are unaffected. So going through the list backwards is the solution in this case. In other cases, it might be something different. So how do we go through a list backwards? Oh, it's, <laughs> it's no problem. I mean, you know how to do this, trust me. But let's look at it, right? Here's a loop. We start at I equals 0. Okay, instead of starting at the beginning, let's start at the end. What is the last element of the array list? A dot size minus 1, right? If there were 10 elements in the array list, the last one is index 9, 0 through 9. Here we want to go all the way until we get to the end of the array list. Now we want to go just down until we get to the beginning. What's the beginning? 0. So i is going to loop until it gets down to 0. Instead of going up by 1, we're going to say i minus minus. Now, oops, oh, and it's not called A, excuse me. In this example, the array list is called particles. Now, if we run this, we can see, here we go. And now this is our example. We have done it. Oops, <laughs> oh, didn't knock over the laptop. Ah, I'm dropping things. <laughs> OK, uh, only thing I could do next is fall. Um, but uh, what we've done it, right? This is exciting. We now have our particles, our basic, simple particle system example. And the next step that we need to take with this is say, we actually now want to encapsulate the idea of a system into its own class. That's going to allow us to have multiple particle systems, right? Particle is an object. Right now we have an array list of objects, but we want to have an, a, an object that is the array list of objects, right? Particle is an object, the system is an object, and then we could eventually have a system of systems, a list of particle systems. Then we could have a system of system of systems, could go on forever. But this is our goal, and that's what we're going to do in the next video.